Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, Between the Keyframes, where I discuss cartoons, animation, and all good things between. It's been a while since my last video, so let's just get right on to it. As we have been discussing cartoons and their impact on World War II, we cannot forget the sheer devastation it has caused on the people at the time. Though we've seen humorous and entertaining aspects of the cartoons I reviewed before, you must remember that their ultimate purpose is in the defeat of the enemy. Now, instead of a gun, an animator will use his wit and his pencil. But just as the enemy has guns, they also have animators of their own. As propaganda goes, Japan really gave the Allies a run for our money. By the 1940s, Japan would have a great understanding as to the importance of cartoons shaping the way people think, especially the younger generation. One of the first big pieces of propaganda would find anthropomorphic animals fighting against Bluto from the Popeye cartoons. It's called Momotoros Sea Eagles. Just take a look at the film's poster. You have Japanese aircraft attacking a U.S. warship with American cartoon characters drowning in the ocean. Definitely not subtle. Directed by 32-year-old Mitsuyo Seiya in 1943, this 37 minute long cartoon stars Momotaro, a Japanese literary folk hero. He leads a band of animals in the pursuit of defeating the enemy demons at Pearl Harbor. In this case, the demons are the Americans. Using these animals and a little bit of humor, Seo is able to capture a child's attention. However, even though this is for kids, the fighting scenes can be very brutal and realistic. From a technical aspect, Seo directed a number of shots to mimic cameras in the real world. Epic establishing shots, panning shots, and even using different layers to mimic realistic depth of field. His editing style also really adds tension to the build-up to the final battle. The beginning of the film has a series of great shots of the animal navy airmen in silhouette preparing for war aboard their aircraft carrier. Now, doesn't it remind you of another great movie that shows Navy airmen preparing for war on an aircraft carrier in silhouette? That's right, the great American classic Top Gun takes its intro cues, whether intentional or not, from a 1943 Japanese propaganda film. Who would have known? Two years later, in 1945, and on the success of Momotoro's Sea Eagles, Seo got to direct Japan's very first feature-length animation, Momotaro's Divine Sea Warriors. Starting with the return of Navy pilots to their hometown in Japan, one of our protagonists is greeted by his little brother who is full of questions about the war. They then meet up with the village kids, and as the older brother is telling war stories, the little brother steals his hat and sneaks off to go play with it. Unfortunately, he gets caught in the river and his brother has to go rescue him. After the rescue, we are greeted to a bit of foreshadowing in the sight of dandelions flying around, soon to be replaced by the soldiers parachuting onto enemy territory. The rest of the movie is about the Japanese forces taking over an island in the Pacific to use as a base to attack the Allied forces. The captain of the Japanese force and star of the movie, Momotaro, finally shows up 26 minutes in and receives news of the Allies' advance from a spy plane. So he gathers his forces and drops into enemy territory, calling back to the dandelions we saw earlier in the film. 
Now, this is where the film changes tone, from happy to downright gritty and violent. But wait a minute, I want to stop for a second and talk about this shot that we just saw of Momotaro. This type of shot is seen commonly throughout Japanese anime, and from my research, this is the first time it has ever been done. Basically showing a moment that combines slow motion and fast motion to highlight an intense moment or to add tension to something that is about to happen. Okay now, back to the film. The Japanese here are ruthless in a fight, and Seo straight up shows allied soldiers being stabbed to death. And this is supposed to be a kid's film. Soon overrun, the allies surrender, dropping their guns and... Wait. What? Back up. Have you ever seen Popeye looking so defeated? Not only did Seo show our soldiers being stabbed, he presents one of our most visibly strong icons as pathetically giving up. Crazy. The last shot of the film takes us back to that little brother who is playing with his friends. We see him climb up a tree and jump onto a map of the United States. He then swiftly gives it a few kicks just to remind us that this is definitely a propaganda film. Seiya was a pioneer of Japanese animation, and he would go on to inspire a new generation of young artists. Seiya was never a military-minded person. Some would say he never wanted to make such radical films, but the animation industry at the time was owned by the government, and he had to appease them. After the war, Seo would go on to produce children's books under a different name, of Seo Taro, and some speculated that this was due to his shame over the films he produced during the war. But regardless, Seo's legacy would go on to become an inspiration to up-and-coming young artists such as Osamu Tezuka, the father of manga and the creator of Astro Boy. Well, that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, please subscribe, please share, and tell everybody. And if you're wondering if I'm going to make any more videos, well, I guess we'll just see. Won't we? Thanks for watching.